JJ and Alex are deep in Utah's strategy and reaction. What the Utes did right and what they need to do better. JJ and Alex, Monday from 3 to 6 on the KSL Sports Zone. Yeah, welcome back. It is JJ and Alex. No, wait. It is first and 12. <laughs> I mean, we had all these promos talking about JJ and Alex. Settle down. But yes, JJ and I do chop it up uh, on the air three to six every uh, evening on the KSL Sports Zone. Mitch Harper, of course, uh, you'll hear him tomorrow on Cougar Nation. We'll see how the uh, fans react. I would assume that uh, it's uh, it's trepidation. A three and zero, feel good about it, but there's a little bit of some nervousness uh, from 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 some fans out there. And there was definitely some nervousness yesterday uh, up at Utah State, where everybody was anticipating. Look, this Utah State team struggled so mightily against USC and a very changed USC team, by the way, it makes you look and you go, how on earth did they stick with Alex Grinch at at, uh, defensive coordinator for so long? As soon as they made a change, they suddenly became an absolute power and Utah, you would think to yourself, well, look, that's a better defense. They should be able to shut down Utah state, but not so fast. uh, Utah state got off to a quick start. Cal Whittingham after the game, uh, a very Cal Whittingham uh, type of commentary because, you know, there's some things his team did pretty well, but there's some things that Utah State did. At the very least, they came out, they were fired up more than Utah was. Here's what he said. I thought Utah State played really well, had a good plan. Bryson Barnes, competitive kid. Uh, they were more ready to play than we were at the onset. Uh, we kind of sleepwalked through that first quarter, uh, got things going after that. I can't tell you why we were not at our best in the first quarter, but we responded and uh, ended up playing good football, uh, particularly in the second half. Uh, defense, I thought, played well, except they let, we let them off the hook a couple times in some really third and long, real long situations, you know, third and 20 plus, and it was a third and 18, so got to be able to uh, get out of those drives. We can't uh, can't have that happen again twice. Uh, Isaac Wilson, I thought he was much improved over his first two appearances uh, of the season. Uh, had some good numbers. And Kai Bernard gave us another 100-yard-plus game. Uh, Dwayne Singer was more involved. That was good to see. Um, and so it was a good win. Utah State, give them credit. They played hard. They are gritty and tough. And uh, they're going to win some games this year. There's no doubt about that. But uh, we got to go to work because next week uh, we got a big one coming up uh, on the road. And uh, it'll be a big 12, uh, really good test and contest. And, see what happens. Kyle, how important is it to get Isaac a win like that in a hostile environment, having to come back and everything that way? All good. Everything you just said is positive for him to experience and to uh, come out with a win and put up 38 points and have pretty good numbers. Uh, you know, he's just a true freshman, so he, he responded. I thought as the game went on, he settled in and got more comfortable, uh, more confident, uh, made some plays for him. It was a great catch by Carson Ryan on the, on the fourth down play in the Indian zone. That was that was a huge play, and uh, it was really good to see Isaac step up and, and uh, play with some uh, some real confidence. How much of the turning point were those two first half interceptions? Big turning point, huge turning point. Uh, Smith Snowden made a great uh, great interception, and uh, that was a phenomenal play by him. And was Camp Calhoun's in the first half of the second? Mm-hmm. Yeah, first half was well. first half. He played that just right. It was a cover two. He shrunk back on the deep route, stole it uh, underneath the deep, the deeper route. Um, and then uh, let's see what were some of the other highlights. He had a good pass rush. I don't know how many sacks we came up with, but we, we got after the uh, quarterback pretty good. Didn't play the run particularly well. That's a good running back, though. That guy's a strong, physical runner. Uh, we need to play the run a little bit better than we did. But uh, overall, like I said, it was a, you know, a win. and. Got to move on to the next one. Is this the sort of offensive balance you want moving forward? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't digested all the numbers, but but closer to what we're after. Yes. You've sort of mentioned for the past two weeks that Makai is the closest thing you have toward a running back. Mm-hmm. If he keeps having performances like that, do you feel like he'll continue to solidify more of a, I guess, a guaranteed running back one role? Well, he's certainly trending in that direction, and uh, Mike Mitchell gives us some great supplemental carries, as does. Dijon Stanley, uh, Charlie Vincent has one in a couple weeks. I don't think he had any carries tonight. Um, you know, I'd like to get Jalen Glover back in the mix. Uh, it's all about practicing well Monday through Friday and doing the things you need to do. But, but uh, I thought that uh, Makai is definitely making a case for being RB1. But again, he's 
He's a guy that he's not the biggest guy. You know, is he a 30 carry a game guy? No, I don't believe so. But he can give us 20 good carries a game, and, and I don't know how many he had tonight, but uh, that's what he had last week. It was 19, I believe. So, so yeah, he's trending in that direction. It yeah. seems like every time Caleb Loner gets out there, he gets the touchdown catch. Caleb Loner is a weapon, and uh, I think we need to find more ways to use it. I'm sure Coach Ludwig will, and, and uh, he's got a big body. You know, when he goes up uh, on that jump ball at 6'7", he's literally, what, 13 feet up in the air. I mean, he's way up there, tough to defend, and you saw him make that nice catch tonight. Keanu said that, that you, oh, sorry. Keanu said that you were trying something new a little bit on defense at times, trying mm -hmm. to mix things up. Then you went to the base defense that you have and things did better. What what are you kind of looking for right there? That you're, you're well, playing? Bryson Barnes knows our D's defense inside and out. <laughs> and so uh, Coach Scally and the defensive staff came up with a, a few looks that he hadn't seen with different personnel groups. And, and uh, I'm not going to say it was bad, but when we settled back to our stuff that we do all the time, we seem to have more success. And so that was the reason that we went into the game thinking we wanted to show different looks. And we had done that against SC in the championship game a couple years back. And it worked extremely well. It was really a, a carbon copy of that. just didn't have as much success today. Shorthanded and then to fall behind and have a deficit and to see them battle back. Is yeah. that just a huge confidence boost, not not just for the team, but also for the coaching staff? should be. Yeah, it is for me. I mean, I, I was proud of them, the way they handled adversity. And, and uh, it was, like I said, great to see Isaac Wilson settle in and look like a real power four quarterback. Uh, we're hoping, obviously, we get Cam back this week, and that's the plan. But uh, it's comforting to know that Isaac is capable of doing what, just what you saw tonight and this afternoon. Awesome. Okay, guys. There you go. There's Kyle Whittingham after Utah takes down Utah State 38-21. to Utes are now 3-0 and on the season. And I would expect coming up here around the top of the hour at noon when the AP poll gets released, they're probably going to be in the top 10 unless there's some – Harsh critics in the pollsters again dropping the Utes. Last week that happened after the Baylor win, but I would expect well, Utah. It was almost ends up it was in the almost 10. more last week it was like, Hey man, how can we sneak USC past Utah? Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect timing. Yeah. I mean there was there's a little bit of that. I mean I I don't I don't see him getting dinged that much, and and I'll tell you too, what's gonna happen this week is is everybody's gonna look and go, Oh wait, Utah or Utah and Oklahoma State firing off against one another. That'd be nice to have a number 10 versus a number 11 or a number 9 versus a number 10, which is the type of matchup you're going to get this week. And, and, uh, and here's the thing that we know about Kyle Whittingham. Like, maybe the team uh, gets a little bit uh, rattled at, at, a, at a stadium they're not used to. Everybody's telling them all week how, how this is a, a rivalry game, and it really wasn't for these kids. Uh, it, yeah, it's 113th meeting, but none of these players have ever played in it. They had to hear from you know from everybody else third hand how big it was. You heard the players be like, "Yeah, it's not really a rivalry game to me. We're going to treat it the same way." But there was a little bit of that not getting it totally done at the beginning because it was a weird atmosphere. Oklahoma State down in Stillwater is the exact type of game that uh, Kyle Whittingham will get his guys up for. And by the way, half of his guys responded, you know, Big Twelve Media Day saying that this was the biggest game on the schedule, and they're not wrong, especially right now. You're talking about the two teams that are the highest ranked in the Big Twelve both undefeated, and the two most tenured coaches uh, in the Big 12 and, and two two of the top three in the entire country in Mike Gundy and uh, Kyle Winningham. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Me too, and, and a lot of eyes, of course, will be on Cam Rising this week and and the status of his, of his hand, and I would expect that he's probably going to play next week, I would think, uh, as he was – you know, warming up in Logan, but didn't officially give it a go as Isaac Wilson got the start in that win against the Aggies. But it's going to be a big game, and you know, it's been it's been, what's been interesting about Utah through three weeks is they've had some uh, sources of uh, you know talent emerge on the offensive side, some additional. Mm -hmm. Uh, reinforcements where you look at Caleb Loner, that dunk play that they continue to go to yep. with Loner continues to have success. He had a touchdown grab. Carson Ryan, former UCLA transfer, he had a TD grab. I thought that oh, was he a bailed, promising he bailed out. Uh, he bailed out young Isaac, Wil uh, Isaac Wilson on that one. That was a that was not a a, a great uh, <laughs> you know play by the freshman. But I'll tell you what it was was it was a perfect moment where uh, you know you get a leader who comes in and says uh, okay. Look, I'll take over here. It was a fourth down, and so it was a huge play. They needed that one. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep coming to the defense of uh, Isaac Wilson. Here's the thing. You watch Bryson Barnes. Every time Bryson Barnes came in over the past couple of years, what was it? It was just a gap filler. When can, you get yeah. to, when can you get to Cam Rising? And this was that, too. But this is a true freshman. And no, at no point in the last three or four years uh, with Cam Rising at the helm 
have you thought to yourself, oh, man, this is uh, – anytime a backup would come in, you don't think about it as being the next guy. Isaac Wilson has been coming in, and he got the starts. He, he got the start this week. He got all the reps in practice uh, that he needed to get, and he turned a corner. He totally grew up this week, and it was what everybody was hoping he was going to do. And, you know, it was a slow start, but he had a heck of a game. And it's exactly the way that you – and this is the future of their of, uh, of the Utah program if everything goes to plan. And and I think it's a great start for uh, well, for Isaac Wilson and his well, career. Well, and I think that's why this is – this injury with Cam, I know it's not as serious as what he dealt with last year, but that's why I think people have been – I don't want to say enjoy, but uh, optim- excited about the quarterback situation still despite no Cam because Isaac Wilson is the guy in four more months – he is the face of the Utah football right. offense going forward. And and that that day is going to be here quicker than we all realize. And I know they have they want to get to the playoff and make a run in that thing, but you know, once this season is done, Isaac Wilson is your guy. And it's always noteworthy too whenever Kyle Whittingham, you know, ha- appoints a true freshman because typically when true freshmen take on a spotlight role, whether it's cornerback, quarterback, they are going to be looked upon to be a big-time talent. And Isaac Wilson has insane talent. Like, I watch every down of Zach Wilson uh, as a BYU player, and I watched a ton of his snaps as a high school player. Isaac Wilson is much farther ahead than Zach was uh, mm-hmm. at this juncture of Zach's true freshman season. Isaac is going to be a special football player for Utah, and I think that's why, you know, yes, you want Cam all 12 games, but that didn't happen as we all expected. Uh, this is a nice uh, deal because you are preparing him, and he's getting valuable snaps for through the first three weeks. We didn't expect that, but it's going to be better off long term because. You know, Utah doesn't want to just be a one-hit wonder in the Big yeah. 12. They want to establish themselves as the top brand, the top program for years to come, and Isaac Wilson is going to have to be the guy that carries that, you know, next season and beyond. I was going to say real quick before we wrap this, too, is that uh, he's so good with the media already, too, right? Yeah. I mean, he's kind of – he's our, he's this is a kid who knows what he's doing. He knows what to say. And it's it's got a it's got enough humility to it with a dash of uh, of bravado too, and I I, I just think it's uh, I think it's awesome. Like the the reality is is that he's going to have a really really good career, and I think he's going to be super good. He knows it. It was nice for him to be able to uh, throw a few touchdowns today, get it going. It it really was. It was impressive, and and I think that Utah. He's got a big one next week. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out in Stillwater. we got to take a break, though. On the other side, it's the much-anticipated power rankings. Who is going to be atop the power rankings this week? We'll get to that next here on First and 12 on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone.